So in the last two videos, we talked about maximum likelihood estimation kind of broadly. And then in the, in the second video, we talked about you know, more formally defining maximum likelihood and the maximum likelihood estimator. Now we're gonna actually work through some examples in applying that estimator in practice. So let's start with a simple example here, a Poisson distribution. Suppose we have 10 data points from a Poisson distribution, but we don't know the parameter in, in, the, in Poisson, we normally call it the lambda parameter. We don't know the lambda parameter that define that distribution. So we know, it came, we know these data came from a Poisson, we just don't know which Poisson. And so I've got this vector of data here that we can think of as, th th this is the result of our, of our random draws or of our data generating process. And if it's been a while since you've thought about a Poisson, I've also written down here the, uh, the probability density function of a Poisson. Uh, in this case, it's actually a probability mass function because Poisson is a discrete uh, discrete distribution, but, but everything works out just the same. We're saying that the probability or, or the likelihood of any particular value conditioned on knowing our lambda parameter is this expression here on the right. And I've plotted this for a few different lambda parameters, just so we can kind of, maybe, maybe it's easier to visualize what this probability mass function looks like. Here we have it for, for lambda equals one, lambda equals three, and lambda equals five. So you can kind of see uh, as, as lambda increases, we're kind of shifting our distribution down and out, um, essentially. So you might already start having some ideas of, of what kind of uh, lambda parameter might have generated these data here. We can go ahead and work through it mathematically also. So uh, you know, I'm, I've, I've got a lot of math here. I'm not gonna work through every single step. I'm gonna assume you can, you can pause the video and work through it yourselves if you want to kind of really understand the math behind each and every step here. But the basic idea is we have 10 data points. So the likelihood that a given, param uh, given lambda value generated those 10 data points is just the product of that probability mass function of all 10 data points. And, and if we just go ahead and expand the math, we get this expression here on the, on, on the right side of, of this, this line. So that's nice. It's a little messy though. We've got all these products and exponents and stuff. So what can we do? We can take the log of this and get the log likelihood function instead. This is the log of the likelihood for a given, uh, uh, for, for, for any lambda parameter conditional on the data. And now we see this thing starts to maybe look a little easier to work with. We're at least adding and subtracting things instead of taking products and dividing. Um, but this is the log likelihood function right here. And so remember, uh, a necessary condition to find the maximum likelihood estimator is that the derivative of the log likelihood function with respect to each parameter equals zero. In this case, we only have one parameter, so we only have one log, like uh, one derivative to take. So let's just take the derivative of this log likelihood function with respect to that parameter, lambda. If we do that, we start to, you know, things are getting simpler with every step here. Now we have that this derivative equals negative n plus one over lambda times the sum of y. All right, we just have one step left. Let's just set this thing equal to zero and solve for lambda. At the maximum likelihood estimator, this thing equals zero. So let's set it equal to zero, solve for lambda. That gives us our maximum likelihood estimator. Like I said, I'll let you work through all the math yourself, but here it is, you can follow along, uh, or you know, this kind of gives you a guide to work through. So we set that equal to zero, solve for lambda, and we get that our maximum likelihood estimator of lambda is one over n times the sum of our y's. Well, that's just the mean value of y. And so if we just take the mean of this thing, we get 1.3. The mean of these 10 numbers gives us 1.3. That's gonna be our maximum likelihood estimator for, for a Poisson distribution of these data. We're gonna say that based on the data we observed, it's most likely that the underlying Poisson distribution had a lambda of 1.3. Like I said, we went through that kind of quick. I think it might be worth pausing and, and kind of working through the math yourself uh, if, if that's something that would help you kind of understand what's going on here. Maybe it also helps to see things graphically. So here I've just, this is the same problem, same data, everything. Here I've, I've, I've written down that likelihood function again. 
And then instead of just jumping to the log likelihood function, let's actually plug in our numbers, right? Let's plug in our yi's in these two spots here, and we get this expression on the right side of this line. And so I think what this really reinforces is the idea that this likelihood function, once we know our data, this likelihood function is just a function of lambda. It's just a function of the parameters. So we could plot this thing. This is just some, some function, a function of our lambda now. We could just plot lambda across the x-axis, uh, likelihood across the y-axis, and just plot what this thing looks like. And that's what I've done down here in the left, on this left plot. If we just plot this expression here with respect to lambda, we get this right here. And so essentially what we're doing is we're just trying to find where is this curve where does this curve hit its peak? Where is it maximized? And so it's right, right here. And so we can kind of see, the, uh, can't see it as precisely as with the math, but yeah, this looks like 1.3. That's where this thing peaks and, and, and then starts coming back down. So it's most likely that it's a 1.3 uh, lambda that generated these data. And we can do something similar with the log likelihood function. We can take that log likelihood function, plug in our data, and we once again see that the log likelihood function is just a function of lambdas once we've plugged in our data. And so we could plot this thing too. It takes a different, and that's what I have down here, it takes on a different shape, right, because we're logging it, but it turns out uh, it reaches a peak at exactly the same point, 1.3. Uh, and, and it's just a little easier to deal with. This, this expression seems easier to me than this one up here. So, uh, so that's why we normally work with the log likelihood function. So that was, that was, that was it. That might've seemed fast. I did go a little fast, but we just worked through a maximum likelihood estimator for the Poisson distribution. Now let's do it again, but for the normal distribution. Suppose we have five data points from a normal distribution but we don't know those mu and sigma squared parameters that generated the data. Here are the five data points, 6.08 and so on. So let's just work through this once again, like we did for Poisson. We wanna start with our probability density function. We wrote this down before, still exactly the same. And then let's Let's take that probability density function to write down our likelihood function. It's just taking the product of this five times because we have five different y's, and, and but also conceiving of it differently. Now thinking of it as we know our y's and we are making this, this, this likelihood function a function of mu and sigma squared. Then we wanna take the log of it. It's gonna make the math a little easier. Take the log, we get this expression here. Once again, feel free to pause and work through this math on your own if that's gonna be helpful. Okay, now we've got the log likelihood function. So we just wanna come up with those first order conditions, the derivative of the log likelihood function with respect to the parameters. Well, now we have two parameters, mu and sigma squared. So we have to take the derivative of the log likelihood function twice. Once with respect to mu, and once with respect to sigma squared. So that's what the last two lines of math are here. If you wanna work through the derivatives yourself, go ahead, this is where, where you're gonna end up. The derivative with respect to mu is, is this first expression, the derivative with respect to sigma squared is the second expression. Okay, so we've got our derivatives. Now the first order condition for maximization of the, of the log likelihood function, which defines our maximum likelihood estimator, is that those derivatives equal zero. So if we set them both equal to zero and do some math, once again, I'm gonna let you do the math yourself. What we come up with is our estimator for mu is just the mean of our data. And if we take that mean, we get 4.44. And it turns out our estimator of the variance is just the sample variance of our data. That's what this expression is. Uh, maybe it, it, it's easier to just see the math though. Here it is. And so if we plug our data in there, we get 2.04. So, I mean, maybe you're starting to see some intuition here. The, the estimator of the mean is just the mean of the data. The estimator of the variance is just the sample variance of our data. Um, that won't always be true, especially as we start to get to more complex models that we're trying to use maximum likelihood estimation for. But there's at least some intuitive appeal here that, that 
our mean parameter just equals the sample mean and our variance parameter just equals the sample variance. So that's kind of nice. Once again, feel free to, to pause, work through this on your own. It, it might help kind of understand what's happening. I just don't want to take the time and, and force you to sit through me, you know, working through the math when, when we could all just do that each on our own at our own speed. All right, let's look at one more example though. Uh, we're gonna look at OLS. We can use, I said this in the first video, OLS is a special case of maximum likelihood. So we can use maximum likelihood to uh, find our, our, uh, the parameters of an OLS regression, right? And this is a little different than our last two examples. In the last two examples, we just said we have some vector of data and we wanna know what distribution, what, what parameters to find the distribution that generated those data. But now we're gonna have some Y's and some X's. We're gonna say, you know, we're gonna start with just the basic OLS regression here, Y equals beta zero plus beta one times X plus a, an error term. But now we're saying Y is a function of X. So we're adding an extra layer of complexity to our maximum likelihood. And it's actually getting us closer to what we normally do, right? Normally we're thinking about having Y's and X's, not just Y's. So the point here is we, 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 describe, we define this, this, this function between y and x, just simple OLS regression that we have here. It's gonna depend on these parameters that we wanna estimate. And then we have to make a distributional assumption about, uh, about some part of, of, our, of our expression here in the, in the case of the regression, we'll, we'll make a distributional assumption about our error term. So we're gonna assume that our error term is normally distributed mean zero variance sigma squared. Pretty common. You don't actually have to make this assumption to do OLS. It gets you some of the nice OLS properties. Um, uh, so, so anyway, but, but we're, we're not really doing anything special here. Uh, we're, we're kind of following the normal OLS setup more or less so far. But we're gonna take that setup and do something very different with it than we're used to with OLS. So if we combine that regression equation with our distributional assumption about the error term, we get a conditional distributional expression for yi. So we're gonna say conditional on a value of xi, if we already know xi, then the yi, the outcome of our regression, is gonna be distributed normal with a mean of beta zero plus beta one times xi, we just take like the, the expectation of this thing and, and the beta zero and the plus beta one times X, there's, there's no randomness there. We're taking all of that as being known uh, uh, or, or knowable or estimable. Then, so that's gonna be the mean. And then the variance of the Y, well, if these things are, are already kind of known and have no variance, then only the, the random error, uh, sorry, the error term is gonna have a variance. And so we just, just have the variance of that error term. So y, conditional on knowing x, y is gonna be normally distributed uh, with a mean of beta zero plus beta one xi and a variance of sigma squared. All right, then we can def this, the, the define, describe the conditional probability density function of that yi. It's normally distributed, uh, it has variance of sigma squared, and it has mean of beta, beta zero plus beta one xi. So we just have to plug in, basically all we're doing here is just plugging in beta zero plus beta one xi in place of mu, where we had mu previously. So you can see this looks pretty similar to what we had in the last example. It's just that now we have this beta zero, beta one, and x one up here instead of a mu. So I'm definitely skipping a couple steps here. We can use that probability density function to give us a likelihood function or actually a conditional likelihood function. Then we can use that likelihood function to get to a conditional log likelihood function, which I have here. Remember, we have three parameters now that we wanna, we wanna estimate. We've got our beta zero, our beta one, and if we wanna fully describe this distribution, we've also got that sigma squared that defines the, the variance. And so we're saying that the log likelihood of those three parameters conditional on the y and the x that we observe is gonna be this expression here on the right. So once again, we just take the derivative of this thing with respect to each parameter 
I don't, I didn't actually write down what those derivatives are. You can take them yourselves or you, you could Google it and find them on a, on another website. Uh, or it's even in the, the notes that those supplemental notes that I posted, uh, take the derivative, set them equal to zero. That's our first order condition for, uh, for our maximum likelihood estimator. And if you work through the math, you get these three expressions for beta zero, beta one, and sigma squared, the estimate, the, the estimator for those three parameters. And you'll see this is going to be exactly equal to, uh, at least beta zero and beta one are going to be exactly equal to kind of the traditional OLS estimators that we, that we think about and know and love. So I think that just reinforces that OLS is just a special case of maximum likelihood. We can apply this very different kind of estimation procedure to the OLS regression and get to exactly the same place. And so I hope this was helpful in seeing kind of, well, you know, more realistically what we're going to be doing in econometrics, which is trying to find parameters that describe how Y's and X's are related to one another. Um, and, and here we've seen it in some simple cases. Next week we're going to get into the logit model where we'll see it in some, some more complicated cases where we have to use maximum likelihood because OLS just isn't feasible on a nonlinear model. But this week we're going to keep talking about maximum likelihood and in the next video we're going to talk about the properties of the maximum likelihood estimator.